and welcome to Windy Hill and welcome to my garret. This is where I do all my writing. As you can see, it's not very big. There's only a skylight as well, so there's nothing to distract me when I'm writing. So today I thought I'd read the chapter, the first chapter in The Secret Admirer, which is the sixth in the Natalie Ward series. Many of you wondered how we would progress from that ending in The Blossom Twins. Um, I'm afraid there's a lot more in store for Natalie here, so I'll just read you a little bit of it. Chapter 1. Nineteen-year-old Gemma Barnes threw her head forward and deftly raked her fingers through her long ash-blonde hair, pulled the elastic band from between her teeth and wound it around the locks, securing them into a ponytail before lifting her head again. She didn't bother checking her reflection in the darkened and smeared glass of the bus window. She knew she looked good. The bus was travelling through the sprawling university campus and allowed a group of students to race across the road. Gemma stared at the office block buildings with several stories of glass windows that made up the science department. She'd never been inside any of them, but according to one of her housemates, Lennox, there were laboratories and classrooms on every level, and on the top floor a research centre that was out of bounds to all students. They drew level with the car park. Lennox's distinguishable battered red Saab was parked directly outside the chemistry block. Although Gemma would have liked the freedom associated with owning a vehicle, she was happy enough to take public transport. Cars cost money, and she didn't have a lot to spare. She stretched out her legs under the seat in front of her and flexed her feet in their thick-soled boots, ideal for wet weather, but less practical for lengthy days of tutorials and lectures until seven o'clock in stuffy rooms. The day wasn't over yet. She had a tricky translation to complete for the following week, but she also had to finish reading the original version of The Tin Drum by Gunter Grass in German for a seminar presentation on Monday. She stifled a yawn and lifted her canvas bag containing her notes, books and laptop from the well-worn seat next to her and stood up. She'd agreed to work sh shifts at Chancellor's Bar on both Saturday and Sunday nights, which meant she'd really have to knuckle down tonight. The university library would provide fewer distractions in the house, where some of the students would be in a more partying mood. It was Friday evening and she should have been joining them, playing music in her room and getting ready to head off to the students' union or one of the many pubs in the area. For some time off, she bit back a laugh. She hadn't been out on a weekend in months, not since she'd started working at the same bar as her mum. She thumbed the bell on the handrail to alert the driver. She was minutes away from Samford University Library, located in what was once a grand manor house, with three storeys of galleried landings, sweeping staircases and silence. She preferred working in her own homely bedroom, cluttered with familiar objects, but it was too easy to be sidetracked and nip downstairs to get a snack, or take a break to watch some television, then get chatting to somebody. The student house was home to five of them, 20-year-olds Lennox, Fran and Ryan, and a mature student, Hattie. Gemma had only been living there since late August, but got on with all the housemates, mates, especially divorcee Hattie, who at 26 was the matriarch of the house and arranged all the cleaning rotors. Without Hattie, the two bathrooms, the kitchen and the large communal sitting room would be chaotically filthy. Living with her mum, Sasha, while at university had never been an option. Gemma needed freedom to come and go as she fancied, keep irregular hours to suit her workload, and not have Sasha fuss over her and worry over little things, such as if Gemma was eating regular meals or overdoing it, or ask about her life all the time. Besides, her mother needed to move on. Sasha was only 35 herself. And because she'd fallen pregnant with Aunt Gemma while still at school and chosen to bring up her daughter alone, she'd missed out on many opportunities, including romantic ones. It was time for her to find a new path too. They were closer, closer than most, most mothers and daughters, but living apart was healthier for them both. It gave each of them the opportunity to become independent. Gemma's phone buzzed and she looked down. It was Sasha. The bus lurched to a halt and she glanced at the message. Finish this outfit today, want your opinion. The photo was of her mother wearing impossibly large hooped earrings and her mane of white blonde hair piled high on her head. She was in a baby blue jumpsuit that flattered her curvaceous figure. With her flawless complexion and naturally plump lips, she looked the same age as her daughter. Gemma smiled at the image. Her mother had no idea how beautiful she was. The doors swished open and Gemma bounded down the steps, thumbing a reply. You look amazing. I love the jumpsuit. Kiss, kiss. 
She shouldered the heavy bag and slid the phone into her pocket, mind on Sasha. Some days she didn't know who was the adult in their relationship. In many ways they were more friends than mother and daughter. It had been drizzling, hev it had been drizzling heavily for hours and puddles had formed on the cracked pavement, shimmering under the lamplight like tiny black lakes. She splashed through them. The library loomed up ahead of her, dark and uninviting. She could still go back on the bus and make a, a return trip to Eastview Avenue, work at home maybe, maybe even in her bed, snuggled under a duvet, instead of sitting at a large table on a hard chair. Behind her, the bus pulled away with a fatigued hiss, hiss and she sighed. The work had to be done. She stuffed her hands in the pockets of her coat, wishing she'd worn gloves. It was a full-blown, miserable, wintry evening. The stone steps up the library were in front of her. Her phone buzzed again and she withdrew it and read, Love you. In a couple of hours, her mum would be at the bar in town. With Gemma no living, longer living at home, talented seamstress Sasha had begun to pursue a new career. Encouraged by her daughter, she'd saved some seed money to start up a new business, and the jumpsuit was a sign she was make, taking it all seriously and getting together a collection to show off her talents. Engrossed in her thoughts, Gemma didn't hear the low cough or the gentle pop of a lid being unscrewed. She wasn't aware of the shuffling of feet. She didn't look up or notice any movement until a figure broke free of the shadows at the side of the huge building and rushed towards her. She looked up in surprise at the sound and stared briefly at the raised hand, but her brain didn't register the jar of liquid being thrown until it hit her face as pain seared across her nerves and she clawed from first her cheeks and then her eyes. She understood what was happening with sudden clarity. Somebody had thrown acid into her face. Fear coiled around her heart and she screamed for all she was worth. A secret admirer. I hope you read it and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you will um, continue with the rest of the series. There's another one coming out in July and I shall be reading from it very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.